story time. When I was a teenager, I kept pretty much everything we did in school in maroon binders, which I very much cherished. I had albums, I had collections of things, I had my schoolwork. I built it up into this whole collection of maroon binders that I was very proud of. Here is a picture of my closet in my pride and joy of the maroon theme. Notice I spray painted the closet rod maroon. This is what was in my closet. Sure you don't need me to show you that. Uh, I'm here to look at some of those maroon binders. To show you what I, as a Salt Mark Hasidic girl, learned in our school system. So you get a sense of what my education was about, and perhaps I can develop further a series on the Hasidic education system, how it might have been before my time, how it is during this time now, which is 20, 30 years later, and uh, how it is, of course, for the boys' side of the aisle which is completely different. Okay, um, we're gonna take a look at my grade six binder, which for some reason is a picture of George W. Bush in here. This is completely falling apart. This has two parts, the Yiddish side and the English side. Our school day was structured in two segments. The morning was Yiddish, which is uh, what we call the Judaic studies, and the afternoon was English, which is what we call the secular studies. They had their own offices, their own administration, their own uh, reporting, report cards and PTAs. It was, it was very little overlap between the two administrations, the secular subjects and the Yiddish subjects. And generally, we thought the secular subjects, the English department was cooler and, and the teachers were more fun and the Yiddish was, for me, pretty boring and dull. Because Yiddish goes right to left, on the right side of my binder we have Yiddish. These are the subjects we had in school. I had Parsha, which is the weekly portion of the Torah. We start with Bereshis, and all of this is in Yiddish. We had to uh, ask what happened after, after Noah and the flood. God promised not to bring another flood. Parsha Fahe, this is a test um, that was signed by my parents. I got a 98. A pleasure. I was not a great student, by the way. <laughs> um, then we had Yahadis. Yahadis is holidays. This is a document. What did I pray up for? Which prayers did I recite during Passover? It is empty. Hi Eid. Hi Eid is Israeli Independence Day, but the Satmar sect is anti-Zionist, so we didn't celebrate Israeli Independence Day. Instead, it was a date to be critical of the Zionist movement. And we understood Zionism as a secular, anti-religious sort of innovation of a new Jew that was a affront to the traditions and the pious heritage that we kept sacred. The Satmar sect and the Satmar Rebbe famously believed that the Jews should not be a sovereign self-governed people before the Messiah came. But I want to point out that we had many of us relatives in Israel, so our anti-Zionism was not anti the people of Israel, but anti the Zionist philosophy. In which school do you learn, do you study? I'm studying in Baisrochel. The holy rabbi Joel Teitelbaum founded it. With what goal did the rabbi found this school? With a goal to, to grab back Jewish children from the Zionist hands and to teach the children in the pious Jewish ways, for example, how to go um, in modest clothing and to observe the mitzvahs. I, I'm just floored by this. Bring from Jewish history all the times when there were those who wanted Jews to, to leave the path of the Holy Torah. Maskilim, which are, are uh, reformers, Zionists, um, apostates, reformers. <laughs> Uh, who are the people in our era who lead the Jewish children from the true pious ways? I wrote Zionists. I have no memory of learning about Zionists and all of this, but this is just a small part of my education. Um, this, so this is the laws of Shabbos. For instance, I have a test over here. What is allowed? 
what is not allowed and what is a question. And I had to answer for 14 questions, are these deeds allowed on Shabbos? And you see both my mother and my father um, signed off on the test. So what, for instance, would be asked on a test like this? Let's say, are you allowed to take food out of the pot while the pot is on the hot plate? Or are you allowed to carry a brooch while you walk in a public space? We had fairly advanced knowledge in laws through the laws subject, which varied from year to year. One year we learned the laws of Shabbos, but other years we learned, let's say, the laws on blessings or the laws on kosher and so on. So these are, these are various rules that we learned as part of the Shabbos laws. This is history, Geschichte. Did you study for this test? Geschichte in the Judaic study section of my book is just Judaic studies history. So it is a very particular era of history. Okay, so let me show you this page. It is titled Geschichte Chazura, which means history summary. And it is actually on Shmiel Aleph, which is the book of Samuel 1 from the Old Testament. So the review sheet summarizes characters of Samuel 1 and each year, we learn different parts of the Old Testament as the Geschichte that we covered that year. What we called history in the Yiddish studies was actually parts of the biblical story. So these are the times of the temple that we are learning about that, we, that is called Geschichte, that is called history, but this is apart from um, history in, in the English department. This is Tach, which is translation from Hebrew. As girls, we didn't learn a lot of Hebrew. In fact, I had a hard time with it, I think, because I wrote that this, this is a very difficult test. Next time, it should be much easier. We have Paitik, which was uh, stories that we recited during the Shabbos afternoons, the long Shabbos afternoons. Neflu is which were the miracles of God. And lastly, we have Yiddish, and it was worth waiting. And this was um, essay writings in Yiddish. So as you can see, there was a lot, a lot of lessons about history, morality, the right way, preserving piety against threats of assimilation. This is the end of the Yiddish section. So for Yiddish in sixth grade, we learned a portion of the Torah, pieces of the story of the Torah, as well as um, morality. We learned about holidays in Yahadis. We learned about Shabbos, laws of Shabbos in the Lamates of Melchus. We learned Geschichte, which was apart from the Parsha, but also pertained only to Judaic studies. We learned Taich, which was about translating from Biblical Hebrew to Yiddish or learning how to translate some of the prayers. We learned Paitik, which was also something that was recited in uh, Shabbos afternoons. And we learned um, the stories around it and, and lessons. We learned um, Naflu Saboida, which was the miracles of God, uh, where we would learn about the, the amazingness of the world and the lesson of the amazing work of, of God in creating this world. In Yiddish was essay writing in the Yiddish language. And finally, extra. And then the, we would have a lunch and then the good part would begin. All of the Yiddish also was accompanied with periods of reciting psalms and reciting all of the prayers. We also had breakfast every day as part of the Yiddish program. After lunch began our English curriculum, the English teacher. We had one teacher for the entire day of English and she would teach math. We are learning to work with money, we have problem solving, we have division. These are regular, often regular worksheets that have been copied and uh, used for our curriculum, often with bits of them censored. The next subject is history. And this is very different history. This history, we are learning about the history of the world. Social studies test Mesopotamia and Egypt. I will tell you, I had a completely, two completely different parallel concepts of the history of the world. One that we learned in the morning, which had to me no overlap and, and 
was a very different story of the past and the other that we learned in the afternoon where we learned about Mesopotamia and Egypt and, and just the whole fascinating world wars. We learned about American independence. In its early days, Rome was first ruled by a king, the majority of citizens and emperor, the Greeks. So these were very different, but also they were censored as needed. This is spelling. So we learned how to spell words. I have a gift of being a terrible speller. We learned grammar, so we learned to understand a noun, a verb. Eventually, by 11th grade, we're supposed to be able to really take sentences apart um, and, and be able to identify the type of words, tenses uh, of a sentence. We had map skills, peninsula song, uh, well, chug away from the USA to peninsula far away for just a very short day. From all four corners, class 6D, here we come from the Balkan Peninsula. Then uh, we had literature. For instance, we read the crickets in the cricket in Times Square, and then we had questions. What type of story is cricket in Times Square? So we were obviously reading stuff that wasn't made for the community directly. I believe now there is a lot of school material that's been made for the community directly. Oh my God, schoolyards filled with children. So we learned very fancy English language songs in school. I'll, I remember this. I remember where I sat by the window in school when we learned this song. Running ha happy, running free, smiles and youthful faces, lively shouts of glee, watching from a window in a brace that's made of steel, sits a lonely little boy whom doctors cannot heal. Tainted by my yellow, give a child a chance. That's the parts I remember. You know, this song is very interesting. It's a song that we learned to recite about a child that is friendless. A lot of what we learned in school didn't sink in for me very much. You were supposed to be very serious about the laws of Shabbos and I feel like it didn't touch me in a very strong way. But the lessons we had in some kids are lonely and, and they, they look at them, how sad it is for them and no one is their friends and you need to make an effort to be their friends, which was what we were taught repeatedly in Yiddish, in English. The entire school was very much aware of the importance of making sure no one is without friends and no one is lonely and how important it was for everyone to look after the girls who didn't have friends. And that really touched me. I took it very, very much to heart. Songs like these would bring me to tears. So we had reading comprehension. We had science where we learned about photosynthesis and we had writing this was the highlight we had a poetry notebook where we had to take our essays and decorate it into a beautiful poetry notebook so this is my sixth grade poetry notebook titled expressions and in here there was a greeting card so when you opened it it's saying and you could play the piano and this is supposed to be the table of contents I spent hours with my friends working on decorating our poetry notebook. This is the first essay I had in my notebook. It is the about the author from the desk of FW. Hi, this is the author, Freddy Wertheimer. I'm born in year 85 in Brooklyn, New York, 11211. My mother and father came from Australia. This is not true, by the way. They love writing. It was in year 89 when I started writing. I made cute little articles. In year 92, I started writing some small papers. Writing got beloved to me. In year 94, I started writing excellent compositions. And now in year 96, 97, I published this book. I hope you'll enjoy it. Well, it kind of was a little sad that it's here 2023 and I have no book and this version of me was really ahead of the game. You always put your essay in a cutesy presentation. You know what? I did not know who this was. To me, this was a, a cute pig. I did not know that this is Porky the pig. I think the vast majority of people would identify this illustration as a character named Porky. This is my school pictures. I collected a lot of pictures, Yiddish teachers, English teachers, everything. Big collector of pictures. This is me. We were having a lot of fun. Oh, see, this is a mock wedding. She's obviously dressed up as the bride. We've played so many mock weddings. Here's the group. <laughs> this is me. 
And here's me with maroon binders. During the break after the school year, we went to summer camp where we spent our time in an all girls summer camp, putting up performances. Another way I can show you what we learned in school is by showing you my report card. This is for instance, the Yiddish report card. This is the school building that we went to. It's very pretty. Uh, it is also a wedding venue and it's where I got married. My report card has a section on behavior, on respect for the elder, on modesty, on responsibility, on prayer, on sewing, on behavior in the lunchroom, and on keeping the times. We would also have a report card that was um, mixing our grades and our behavior. So we had sewing classes that were part of the Yiddish curriculum. This is one year, my courses, I already threw up all of these things, so I only have digital version, where we learned the goal of the course would be to be able to sew clothing um, in its entirety. Oh, is those who can't sew clothing in its entirety and need to buy really cheap things uh, to be able to fix them to make them modest. So what does it mean to be modest? It means it has to be entirely closed at the, at the neck. The sleeve has to be long and at any stand with, let's say a cuff or a pleat. The length needs to be long enough of the skirt and any slit has to be closed through various um, ways you can close a slit. So what we actually learned in sewing class that year was how to do various pleats. For instance, this is a skirt pleat extension. And we did little models. Pleat insert in slash, skirt double pleat, skirt center pleat. We also learned how to properly clean a talus, a men's prayer shawl, which is really difficult to clean because it has an attachment of silver on it that has to be sewn off. It has to be removed and then sewn back on. And this is the uh, lesson in how to clean the talus, which I found to be particularly challenging. This is uh, part of my ninth grade education in Yiddish. We learned about anger about uh, enemies breaking peace. He who believes that everything comes from God doesn't get angry at his messengers, is what I wrote here. You should remember not to get angry. There was a lot of that, um, as far as I remember, learning to temper expression of, of expansive emotions like rage. People do not like to spend time with someone who has anger issues. So I want to take a look at some of the ways in which our curriculum was censored. Let's, let's take a look at a little bit of censorship. Early exploration, we learned most people think that Columbus was the first person to discover America. This is not true. Both the Indians and the Vikings arrived before Columbus. Many thousands of years before Columbus was born, groups of people from Asia followed animal herds across a narrow strip of land that once connected with connected North America to Asia. And this has sort of been censored out with a bunch of question marks and a parentheses on it. I suppose it goes too much into the history that takes us back to conflicted with the world being as uh, 6,000 years old or so. Clinton's tough new law will outlaw cigarette advertisements at sport events, on items like t-shirts and hats, and in youth-oriented... Hmm. Try to figure out what this word means. I think I have an idea, but this is kind of how parts of the standardized sheets were censored. Cinemas, I think it is. Page, who's among, who's who among government? We have various countries and the segment on Israel has been crossed out because our education was anti-Zionist and the idea of Jews having a sovereign government, I suppose, was something that the censors believed needed to be taken out. Here's another example of censorship. Funny, she thought she didn't know why, but she was even more uptight than usual. She was tired and looked forward to a long soak in the tub and her new crossed out and they said periodical. I suppose the word magazine was not kosher enough. Dear Mrs. Feldman, we apologize for our ruid behavior. We now know that it is wrong to misbehave. 
We hope that we are forgiven and will try our utmost to improve. Thanks for you for teaching us a good lesson. Ah. Choosing words that say exactly what you want to say is like fine tuning. I'm guessing a radio. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racists, that one day right there in Alabama, little black boys will join hands with little white boys. I have a dream today. So the boys and girls holding hands together has been censored out. The thing that's interesting about censorship is how pronounced it is when you go back in adulthood and with adult eyes to look at that which has been censored, of course, selectively. It's especially interesting to look at it because I have no memory of anything I'm seeing that's been censored here. This is what we learned in English in grade seven. We learned history, spelling, math, grammar, literature, poetry, reading comprehension, writing, science, and lastly, geography. And it is quite interesting. We learned about all sorts of world events. We, we really covered a lot of concepts like phobias, poems, literature. I only have these two years, but in high school we had home economics where we learned how to take care of the home, which was one subject of, let's say, 10 English subjects. We had sewing. That was it. There was no art. There was no extras, what my son calls extras. There was no music. Oh, there was computers. It started in ninth grade with typewriting. We had a big typewriting room. We learned how to, how to touch type. This was before the internet was on computers and computers were a little more innocent back then. Finally, at the end, before my graduation from school, we did a yearbook which was called A Flame, where various essays were published by other students. Jokes, pretty jokes. Oh, let's see, I have a limerick. A walking encyclopedia, an actress number one, a popular ringleader, and a world of fun. I don't remember this at all. So this was our yearbook, and after 11th grade, we graduated and went out to work, and that was the end of my formal education. I don't know how much things have changed today and perhaps we can explore more of that but certainly all of this and the extent to which we learned about the world differed enormously from what my brothers were learning. However, I still had a really hard time grasping a linear story about the world because of the, the duality of the versions of the world we learned about. Well, that wraps up all I have, just a couple binders. Of course, we had textbooks and notebooks and a ton of things. I think they illuminate a little bit on uh, what my education was like. And if you like this kind of thing, please let me know, leave a comment, tell me what questions you have, what I didn't answer, what else intrigues you. And I'd love to continue exploring education in the religious community with you. Mona, I gotcha. She says, please subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos because we like it, we can climb around. <laughs>